Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our very first workshop of Celsi Take a Girl Child 2020 in collaboration with UNISA Gauteng Region. On today's program, we'll be focusing on career planning, career choice, goal setting, and personality. And in line with today's theme, which is discovering my path, we have different speakers who are also going to take us through the different kinds of professions. We have doctors, we have lawyers, we have entrepreneurs, and we have chartered accountants. But before we can go into the program, I want us to understand why we are here. What is the reason for us to have these Salsi Take a Girl Child workshops. And some of those reasons is to encourage young women to follow their dreams, is to give hope to young women, especially those who may feel trapped in a cycle of poverty and abuse, is to build self-esteem of young girls and to empower and assist young women to achieve their full potential by giving them the information, resources, and tools necessary for them to make life choices which will be better for them and the future generation without any waste of time we're gonna go into the program and welcome our first speaker mr Tudi, who is the manager for communications and marketing at unisa Gauteng region good day learners and welcome to the celsi take a girl child to work virtual event hosted by the university of south africa Gauteng region a very warm welcome to everyone, to each and every one of you who have joined us in this virtual event. My name is Hector Mutudi, and in this video, I will be presenting an overview of the University of South Africa as an open distance and e-learning institution and how it operates. UNISA, as the University of South Africa, is Africa's largest comprehensive university with particular focus on distance education. UNISA enrolls nearly 400,000 South Africans in the system of public universities. UNISA has provided many people with opportunities to further their studies, including those who needed to study part-time while they were working or are in employment, as well as those who could not afford contact institutions such as VETS, University of Pretoria, and University of Johannesburg, etc. In UNISA, we offer a combination of career oriented courses in nine colleges. That include the College of Accounting Sciences, College of Economic and Management Sciences, College of Education, College of Human Sciences, College of Law, College of Graduate Studies, College of Engineering and Technology as well as College of Agriculture and Environmental Sciences. That is basically... Welcome to Salsi Girl, a platform created as an extension to Salsi Take a Girl Child to Work Day. Here's the deal. Our aim is to make every day of your school life a little easier and a lot less stressful with tips, advice, resources, and some inspiration. Not only will you find the website helpful, you're going to love how easy it is to use. On the home page, you'll find quite a few articles available for you to read. Simply click on study, life or inspiration for any of the useful articles in that section. If you don't have time to read the article immediately, we got you. You can simply save it for later. Take the career test and find out what career might best suit you. Create your very own CV. I know, right? With this super easy Salsi Girl CV creator, how cool! Look for bursaries and internship opportunities right here on the Salsi Girl site. And if you want to find a library, school, university, college, coffee shop <coughs> near you, click on the locator tool. The download section has a bunch of guides and documents you can use to help you study better. They're really easy to download and guess what? They're all free. If you just need advice, which we all do sometimes, click on Ask Sal Siegel. It's completely private and completely safe. Woosa. Oh wait, don't forget to create a profile so that you're able to use all the cool features on the site. Creating your own profile is really quick and really easy. And the best part? You can use whatever device to enjoy the Sal Siegel website. You heard me. From your computer, to your tablet, to your best friend, your phone. And if you're on the Sal C network, Accessing the site is completely free. So go ahead, visit salsegirl.co.za today for all these features and more. You're welcome.
good day, guests. My name is Mama Shumabo. I'm the student counselor in UNISA Johannesburg Regional Service Centre. And today is a take a, take a girl child to work event where we'll be helping you discovering your path. The theme for this year is Discovering My Path, which is a very personal matter. We don't need anyone to be helping us to discover our path, only for, for them to be here to support us. Because making a career decision or the career that we choose, it's it's very much personal. We we, we need to, to personalize it because we are the ones who are going to be living it for the rest of our lives. So now um, we, we're going to, I'm going to be taking you through the steps into making a career decision, focusing uh, my attention on personality, interest, subjects, values, employability, and goal setting. On personality, we are all different as people. That is why you don't need anyone to, to impose their careers into your life, because whatever that works for them might not work for you. And uh, whatever that they like, you might not like. So your personality must guide you into making a career decision and uh, knowing the kind of a person that you are, knowing that you are an introverted or you are an extroverted, it will help you to make a career decision. Introverted in this way, I mean someone who enjoys to be on their own, enjoys their own space and, you know, work well in, 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 in small crowds. And we have extroverted someone who is so bubbly, you know, relate with everyone, able to mingle with people become so social and and work well in social gatherings then you know if, if if you know that you are an extroverted you will check the qualifications or the careers that are more for extroverted people and if you know you're an introverted as well you will check the qualifications or the careers that are more for introverted people and we also have interests what is it that you like the most what what you like doing as a person then with your likes, for example, if you, if, you, if, if you say you like helping people, you will check the qualifications or the careers that will allow you to help people and not forgetting your personality as well to say, if I like helping people, in which way do I like helping people and how many people can I actually be willing to help in maybe in an hour or so? or in, 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 in the eight hours that we spend at work. So so that you don't get stuck when you find yourself working with a with, with large crowd or working with one person, but you trying to help because that's what you like. And then the values as well. The values are very important in guiding us into making a career decision because we value different things as people. If you say you value money, you would need to check the careers that will allow you to, to get money or more money on a short space of time. In, in, in that way, you know, it will help you to live your dream. The subjects. Remember, all of these things need to connect at some point. The subjects that you have chosen when you were doing grade 10. Are they eligible to help you with your interests and as well as with your values? And are they eligible to also help you on your personality? Because now all of these things, like I said, they need to connect at some point to, to make a whole. And a whole in this way will be the career that you choose. And somewhere, somehow, it's possible that they can clash. You find that you want to be a doctor, you like helping people and you can be a doctor, you are very good with, 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 with your personality is very good, you know, you value helping people, you like helping people, but your subject says, mm -mm. when uh, you cannot manage to do that because you don't have life sciences, you don't have mathematics, you don't have physical sciences. So it means that you have to go back and check what is it that I can do that will allow me to help people but then at the same time, uh, 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 um, you know, uh, hanging on to my values and also uh, considering my personality. And employability. Uh, it's very much important for one to check how they can maneuver all odds. What I'm saying in this way is no one would want to make a career decision 
or choose a qualification or a career that would not yield good results that would not allow you to live your dreams where employability is concerned so um we are all looking or some of us we are looking at being getting employed by private or, 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 or government sector. But we realize that after we, f we finish our qualifications or, yes, our qualifications in this case, because before there's a career, there's a qualification. So uh, you need that qualification if you're going to study to make a career out, to make a career out of it so you choose i mean you finish your your qualification in the institution of higher learning and you realize no this this qualification i've done it and i love it and everything else but I, i'm struggling to find employment then if you find yourself struggling to find employment what is it that you can do with that qualification or with that career that you have chosen to 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 put food on your family's table because at the end of the day when we we study we study to we study to end up getting employment or to generate income so if 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 if, if you have chosen the right career for you it it will make it easy for you for when you are struggling with employment because you can always see how you can maneuver all of that and make a a living out of the qualification that you have chosen because it will be something that you love remember making a career decision also helps you to to be self motivated to be focused, to be loving what you're doing, and most importantly, to enjoy your journey in the career. So it's, it's very much important to, to, to take note of that. And then in, in so doing, you, you will also eliminate the chances of you changing careers or qualifications throughout the years because now you'll find yourself stuck. But if you don't, then it means that you can always use that uh, very same career or very same qualification to do something else other than the one that you were thinking you'll be, you'll be getting when you finish the qualification. Then we go to our last item of goal setting. On goal setting, we are focusing on um, uh, uh, the, 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 the popular uh, uh, theme that we always see everybody talking about, which is a smart theme. Smart theme meaning that your goals as a person should be specific, measurable, action-oriented, realistic, and time-framed. Being specific, it just means that you set your goal. You say, I, I want to be an accountant. And then being measurable, it means how long will it take you? What length will I take for me to become an accountant? Remember, um, you need to make enough research to know the do's and the don'ts, the ins and the outs, the pros and the cons of that qualification so that you, you measure your time uh, accurately. And also action-oriented. You cannot just say for yourself, I'm going to be an accountant and yet sit at home waiting I don't know, for mana in heaven to to give you that qualification is not going to be possible. So what you need to do is um, uh, you start acting now, working on your mathematics, working on your accounting, working on, on, on all the subjects that are necessary for you to become an accountant. And then being realistic as well. Um, you cannot say to yourself, I'm going to finish the accounting science degree in two years when you know very well that or you're going to become an accountant in two years. It's, it's, it's not possible because you need a three-year qualification, some postgraduate uh, certificates here and there, having to write your, your board exams, some, some things like that. So you need to make enough research on how to go about becoming an accountant. I'm giving an example of, a, of, of, of an accountant. It's not like I'm just saying all of you should go into accounting, but I'm just giving an example. For whatever the qualification that you end up choosing, it must be... Um, you know, you, you might you, you need to make enough research about it. So and then the last thing is time frame. Everything that you have or you're going to do, it needs to have a time frame. You need to set time for yourself. How long will it take you into 
becoming what you want to do and uh, 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 in that way it helps you to be smart and work smart and be productive i wish you all the best and i i wish all of you to to remain safe and work hard in your studies and um we hoping to see you next year in the institutions of higher learning we hoping to read about you one day uh you becoming something because you have been a, a part and puzzle of a take a girl child to work sponsored by salesim thank you hello everyone my name is nana hobe i'm really privileged and honored to be part of the 2020 Celsi Take a Girl Child to Work in collaboration with the University of South Africa, Houghton Province. Mm, I'll be taking you through a career guidance in the agricultural industry. I understand the moment I say agricultural industry, majority of us might have lost interest because whenever farming and agriculture is mentioned among young people, what we think is like working under the sun, those dirty hands, like there's no slaying in agriculture. That's what we all think. But today, lend me your ear and let me navigate you through career path in the agricultural industry. You can become a doctor in the agricultural industry. However, you become an animal doctor, then you can study your veterinary. You can become a plant doctor and you study your plant pathology. You can become an economist. You study agricultural economics. You can study... Um, plant sciences, you can study horticulture, you can study floriculture, you can study soil sciences, you can study entomology, you can study food sciences, you can study weed biocontrol. There's just a lot of career path in the agricultural industry beside working in the field. So just go to your nearest university and check if they do offer the agricultural career path. Where, which university or where can you go and study this? mentioned above Korea. You can study in your University of Pretoria, you can go to your Stellenbosch, you can go to University of Limpopo. Yes, I personally studied at University of Limpopo. I'm currently doing my master's degree with the University of Venda. You can go to UKZN, you can go to your nearest agricultural college. We have um, agricultural college such as our Tawung Agricultural College, we have uh, Tombiseleka Agricultural College, we have uh, Matibandela Agricultural College. So just look around your home and see if there's no any agricultural college where you, buy, you can go and pursue your agricultural degree or diploma, sorry. Uh, furthermore, so who can fund you if you, you enrolled, okay? So who can fund you? The potential sponsors can be your Department of Agriculture, your Land Development, your Land Bank, it can be SAPS, it can be any agrochemical companies such as your Bayer SA, it can be your Agricita, it can be your municipality, your local municipality can also fund your studies. You can also be funded by NSFAS, you can also be studied by a merit buzzer. You can try to push and push and push and push work hard and then you get a merit in each and every institution a higher learning institution mm. furthermore for you to go to university and study bsc or agricultural science the minimum requirement is that you must have a mathematician a mathematics sorry as a subject a pure maths and then your, your physical science, your life science, your geography. Some of us are doing agriculture as a subject in our high school level. So even agriculture is very vital for you to get an entry level at a university. Now, after studying or pursuing all those agricultural career, where can you go and work? Uh, you can work in different companies beside working under the sun. <laughs> so you can work at an agricultural research council where you become a researcher, and then you can work at your agrochemical companies, you can work at your department, your nearest department, you can work at a, at, at a department also being an extensionist, you can also be a businessman, an agripreneur, where you just find a piece of land, maybe you plant your own, your own stuff, and then you you make money with agriculture so uh, I just wanted to change this perspective about agriculture that let me just give you a practical example some of us ever since the year started we haven't seen a doctor 
like you've never visited a doctor some of us even it's been two years or three years but how many times did you eat in a day some of us we we eat three times some of us we eat four times with snacks in between so that is agriculture for you to eat there should be a farmer so that's how important agriculture is so from today i want you to change your perspective whenever you hear the word agriculture stop thinking about those dirty hands stop thinking about working under the sun think about wealth think about food production think about um food security think about all the beautiful things that is associated with agriculture it's like you're rubbing your hands with nature so agriculture is also vital you need the skill also, you can plant at your home, at the backyard of your home, and then you address food security at a household level. Thank you very much for lending me your ear. I wish you all the best with your career choice that you're going to make. And then remember, whatever career choice you choose, know that you're going to be there for the rest of your life, maybe. Yes, because most of your time, we spend most of our time at work than at home. So make the right career choice. I wish you all the best. Continue washing your hands sanitize your hands let's put on our mask and then social distancing thank you very much good day to you all my name is sharon moise i'm 26 years of age and i am an entrepreneur so i've got a coffee shop in woodstock it's called sharon's cafe and we've been operating for nearly a year now what 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 field did i study so i studied public relations management i studied it at cput and still studying my master's degree in pr so i know a lot of people think that entrepreneurship is not directly linked with pr and that you need to pursue something like a master's in business administration but what i've learned about pr is learning how to manage relationships both with the consumers or customers and with the with the stakeholders and that puts you in uh, a better position to be an entrepreneur so i've used my skills and my love for people in pr to translate in my business you know and it's always fascinating to study to grow more to understand more about the complexities of the world that we live in because if we look at post covid um, a lot of people are going to be looking for solutions in this digital era and I think being in PR and business allows me to look at opportunities um, in the gap and see how I can um, come up with solutions or be the mediator between consumers and clients. So uh, entrepreneurship is something that is directly linked with PR and I'm just enjoying the journey so what are opportunities in the field so like I, I i stated in the beginning you could be a journalist you could be um in media you could be in a pr agency you could actually be in a corporate company or you could be an entrepreneur like myself so it, it just it doesn't limit you it teaches you a broader understanding of the world and how people relate to each other and how they relate to brands so it's it's really an amazing uh, um, field and there are bursaries and opportunities and there is a demand in terms of jobs for or us PR people um, because post COVID life will be different life will be digital everybody's buying online but now they need to understand what the consumers are thinking and what the consumers want and that's where entrepreneurship comes in people like myself being able to identify the gap and um providing a service to close the gap uh successes and challenges so this is a very fun one challenges i would say um is understanding that things take time in entrepreneurship unlike if you had like a regular uh, nine to five job so you need patience um, you need to understand that it's not gonna boom first thing first hand it's a, it's a learning process and some of the challenges I've encountered is obviously COVID when it came in um, our shop had to close down so there are a lot of dynamics that you it's unforeseen circumstances that always show up when you're in entrepreneurship but i'm glad that those are the things that build our character and that make us stronger and wiser 
and uh, more fulfilling to be an entrepreneur so what other successes obviously the coffee shop itself is a huge huge thing but another success story is my coffee beans that are launching it's called Sharon's blend and I'm, I'm just looking forward to people receiving it to people enjoying it to people basking you know in the goodness of one's uh, love hard work and and things that i cherish so it's 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 a journey that has had its own ups and downs but mostly it's been ups because of my passion and my love for people for pr and for entrepreneurship so if you'd like to know more about entrepreneurship or pr feel free to contact me and i'll give you more information hi everyone i'm sipi Somme, and i'll be taking you through the journey to being a chartered accountant so i started my journey by doing a three-year course at vits in bachelor of accounting sciences and then i did my postgraduate diploma in accountancy and this four-year co course is your prerequisite to becoming a CA. I then followed by getting a training contract with Ernst & Young, or EY, which is one of the big four firms. And during this time in my first year, I wrote my first board exam being the ITC. And in my second year, I wrote the final board exam being the APC. I'm currently in my third year, and by the end of this year, I will have finished my training contract and be eligible to qualify as a CA. And uh, the, one of the perks of the industry that I'm in is that you get to understand what happens in business from the ground up during the audits. So, for example, we work in mining, we work in telecommunications, we work in the retail sector and in the financial sector as well. So whichever lane you choose to go in, you'll have enough knowledge. And uh, another one of the perks is obviously the money. So once you've qualified, you start earning a lot of serious money because you get to choose the path that you want to go into, whether you want to stay in audit or whether you want to leave audit and join other departments like tax, for example. And thereafter, you can still become a financial manager if you choose. It's all up to you. And another one of the perks is getting to travel. So you can travel while you're still doing your articles, like have clients that are out of the country or out of the city. And another one that we have, I think all of the big four firms have this, where at the end of your three-year articles, you get to travel for three months or two years, whichever one you choose. If you want to work for three months overseas and come back, you can do that. If you want to uh, go away for six months, you can do that. If you want to go away for two years or indefinitely, there are those opportunities that are open to you. And uh I want to also mention the challenges that we do face being that you need to you develop the skill of managing time and managing other people because as you develop and progress in your articles you start to become responsible for yourself and responsible for helping those beneath you being the first years being the second years and also assisting the managers to complete the audit so you need to be able to manage that whole process by yourself Obviously, there will be people that are there to help you, but you need to learn that skill. And the last one that I want to mention is a little bit of a high level one where for seven years of your journey, everything is paced out. Everything is decided and set in stone that you're going to do your four year uh, qualification and you're going to do three years of articles. But thereafter, once you've qualified as a CA, you need to decide what you want to do with that because there are so many options for you after you qualify. So you just need to do your research and know what you love and what you'd like to go into. And uh, that's it for me, guys. Uh, all the best with your studies and see you on the other side. Okay, good day, everyone. I'm Professor Mbalentle Zulu. I work at UNISA at the College of Accounting Sciences. I teach accounting financial accounting to be precise. Um, in terms of my qualifications, I'm a chartered accountant by profession. So today I'll be sharing my career journey with you, uh, particularly, you know, um, regarding the choices that I made earlier on in life while I was in high school and also when I was at varsity, because it is because of those choices that I made earlier on in my life, which have led me to be where I am today. So in terms of, you know, where it all started, 
basically my career started when i was in high school um I, I i did i took accounting as a subject when i was in high school and i also did pure maths now the thing that most people don't realize or the thing that most students particularly learners don't realize about becoming a chartered accountant is that you need pure maths in high school not maths literacy but you need pure maths so make sure that you study or you take pure maths as a subject in high school because without pure maths you will not be able to enroll for any become accounting degree in any university in sa and sometimes what i often see um, for example, when we have career days at our institution or the previous institution that I've worked at is that some learners would come and they will say, ma'am, I want to enroll for Bucom Accounting and I'll be so excited and I'll share the journey and then I would ask, okay, so are you currently doing pure maths? And some of them will tell me actually that they're not taking math as a subject and um, it's all sad because sometimes as learners you make the wrong decisions because you do not have access to information so if there's one thing that you need to take out of the session is that for you to qualify as a chartered accountant you need to take math as a subject in high school when it comes to accounting as a subject in high school, it's not a requirement for you to take accounting as a subject in high school. Um, you can enroll for a become accounting degree without accounting as a subject. But obviously, I mean, if you've done accounting in high school, it will then give you a proper foundation, which will be beneficial when you eventually enroll for your become accounting degree adversity so that is really the most important thing so when i said that you know your choices the choices that you make even in high school will then determine whether you go through the the ca route ca route is chartered accounting chartered accountants route or whether you go through any other route it starts there in high school okay so after high school, I then went to UKZN and that's where I enrolled for a BCom Accounting degree. So it took me three years to complete my BCom Accounting degree and then I did my uh, BCom Honours in Accounting and that also took me one year. And then after that, I then went and I did my articles for three years. And while I was busy with my articles for three years, I also wrote board exams in between. So once I was done with my board exams and once I was done with my articles, I then qualified as a chartered accountant. So while I was at varsity, I had a bursary from ESCOM. So the thing about being a BCom accounting student is that there are plenty of bursary opportunities. You just need to know where to apply. And what often happens is that most universities have a bursary office on campus. And that's actually where you can go to apply for bursaries. And you know, sometimes you would apply to your, you know, your company of choice and you will not get that bursary but um, this should not deter you. You need to keep applying until you get something. So the main thing about that is that obviously your marks need to be good, you know, because then if you if your marks are not good or if your marks are not, you know, above average, why then should company A invest their time and their resources on you? So you need to work hard from the word go, you know, from first year, you need to work hard. And if your marks are good, chances are you will get awarded a bursary. So that is information that's often publicly available to students, but some students do not have access to that information because maybe they're not aware of it or maybe they're just overwhelmed by a whole lot of things going on, you know, on campus. So you need to make sure that you know where the bursary office is and you need to make sure that you go there and you apply for that bursary. Okay. So when it comes to the challenges that I faced while I was uh, pursuing my BCom accounting degree, as well as my BCom accounting honors was that, you know, it's not necessarily a difficult degree, but there's a lot of work, you know, there's a lot of work and you need to be disciplined. You need to work hard. You need to study almost every day 
you know because if you fall behind with your work you are almost guaranteed that you're not going to be able to catch up on your work because there's new information every day so i can say that while i was at varsity that was one of my biggest challenges you know you will study until you get tired and you know even when you wanted to rest or even when you wanted to do other things you couldn't really do other things you know there's no time most of the time you don't even have time for extra murals um, you just it's just you and your books it's just you and your books and if you keep that discipline and that hard work and you're consistent for the four years I can almost guarantee you that you will succeed you will definitely succeed okay so um, you know the the big question that I often get asked is you know I'm a chartered accountant you know I'm a qualified chartered accountant and what am I doing in academia you know what am I doing at UNISA you know how did I end up being an associate professor well if you think about it uh, medical students are taught by medical doctors right and um, law students are also taught by lawyers so it's only fair and it only makes sense that CA students are also taught by chartered accountants so that's basically how then i ended up in academia um after spending a few years in corporate i actually realized that my passion is in academia you know it fulfills me to spend time with students to impart that knowledge to students to influence to inspire to teach so that's basically why then i decided to come um you know and join academia and at the moment basically so what i do is that i lecture financial accounting and then i also then do research that that's what my job basically entails so in terms of the you know career streams that you can follow you can you know once you become a chartered accountant basically you can choose to work anyway you can you know you can you can work as an auditor you can work as a financial accountant you can work as an investment banker and you know like me if you're passionate about teaching you can also come to academia and 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 teach other young people um you know in a country like ours in SA, i always say that representation matters so for me one of the reasons also why i decided to join academia was so that other young aspiring chartered accountants can see someone who actually looks like them so that they know that it is possible and that they can actually also become chartered accountants if they want to become chartered accountants so that's basically how then i ended up so in terms of the challenges that i faced in my career um, you know, the first one I would say um, has been balancing my private life as well as my work life. It is quite a demanding um, career, you know, being an academic, you know, you teach, you have to do research, you have to study, um, you know, you have to do your master's, you have to do your PhD. And those are the things that, you know, I would say maybe has been the biggest challenge, but, you know, it gets better over time you learn how to manage your time and i can say that you know now my time management skills are definitely way better than five years ago and also you know the the, the other challenge that i faced in my career i would say was probably reaching my goals at a young age and as much as that's you know a brilliant thing it also comes with its own challenges because you almost always have to prove yourself that you know you deserve to be in a space that you're in and how i then manage that is that i work hard i make sure that i strive for excellence in everything that i do and i then let my work speak for itself and um and yeah that's 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 my career journey in a nutshell i wish you all the best and uh stay focused work hard and hopefully in a few years time i will meet some of you thank you Good morning. My name is Kale Rebe. My surname is Ramarata. I'm an admitted attorney of the High Court of South Africa. So this is what I did to become an attorney. I obviously did my LLB degree at a university for a period of four years. After completion, I went to law school, which is the school for legal practice for a period of six months. After that, I wrote my attorney's admission exams 
which consists of four subjects. I wrote my attorney's admission exams and then I passed them. And then what I also did is that I had to serve articles for a period of one year. Had I not gone to the school for legal practice, I'd be expected to serve my articles for a period of two years. So I did my articles for a period of one year, wrote my attorney's admission exams, and then I got admitted last year, which is 2019, May the 13th. So after that, I joined a big law firm which is known as Lindsay Keller. It's situated in Rosebank. That is where now I'm working as an, as an associate. So um, this law profession is very much broad. When you do your LLB, it doesn't mean that you'll be an attorney. You can either be an advocate or a prosecutor. So this is what you do if you want to be an advocate. Whilst attorneys go to, to the school for legal practice, advocates um, do their pupillage. They do it for a period of one year. Whilst attorneys write the attorney's admission exams, advocates write their bar exams. And then there are two types of advocates. There are advocates of the bar and those that are independent. They do not belong under any bar. They are independent. So for those independent ones, all you require is your four-year LLB degree and then you make an application to the high court and then you'll be given the title advocate. You'll be declared an advocate of the high courts of South Africa. However, that has its own challenges because attorneys don't prefer to brief advocates of the independent, those that are independent. They prefer to brief advocates that belong to a bar so that whenever anything goes wrong, you know where to report them or whatever. So should you be interested in criminal matters, you can also pursue the prosecution. You can also work as a prosecutor. I, I usually get a question of why do other attorneys work in offices? Why do other lawyers work in offices, whereas other lawyers work in court? The, the lawyers that are based in court are the prosecutors. Those are the lawyers that represent the state. Those are the lawyers that represent, um, they deal with criminal matters, they represent the state, of course. Just like, for example, in a crime, in a criminal matter, there is always a victim and a perpetrator. So the prosecutor always represents the victim the victim is guaranteed an, a lawyer all the time and that lawyer is a prosecutor. So the challenges that I came across in my journey of becoming an attorney is that it is not easy to secure articles. It is not easy to get a law firm that, that is willing to absorb you and train you. Because remember, the, the, firm, the law firm does not benefit anything from you because you are fresh from school, you don't know anything. So it is not easy to secure articles. However, um, there is SACETA. SACETA funds um, candidate attorneys. Should you get a law firm that is saying, okay, we're willing to train you, but we're not gonna pay you, or rather we're not in a position to be able to pay you, then SACETA kicks in, it funds you. However, they first check your, back, your financial background. They do not just automatically fund anyone. Um, so obviously during your LLB degree, you can study using NESFAS or any other bursary, depending on your performance and everything. And then other than that, I love being an attorney. It's very much, very much interesting. Like you learn, you, you learn something new every day and I just love what I do. I love being a lawyer. And it is not true that lawyers lie. We interpret the law. We apply the law. We apply what the law says should be applied. And remember, there is always a defense for something. <laughs> so lawyers don't lie. Hi, everyone. My name is Ruba Shelley. I'm 22 years of age. I'm currently studying Bachelor of Mind Surveying at University of Johannesburg. I am here to talk about my career field. 
which is mine surveying in the mining industry oh mine surveying is a very interesting course that works with measurements and calculations and um, yeah estimations and all of that it's a mathematic uh career which is very interesting because all you do is just to map things out give directions give measurements give distance gives degrees skills bearings and all that but then it's a very challenging cause in terms of uh the gender the gender because in our mining industry we have few females than males so is that thing of the industry belonging to males and they are used to the industry belonging to them but then as a woman you stand a chance because now the industry are looking for women the knowledge of women empowerment yes we are currently looking for women in mining and it's uh, again a very challenging cause again because it's underground it can be underground it can be on surface on site or whatsoever but the challenging part is those people that are afraid of darkness as much as if not that it's in the underground but it can be very scary so yeah but then the opportunities available there are a lot of mining bazaaris if you just go to the internet and search mining bazaaris you will get a lot and it's advisable that you get a bazaar because after that if you have a bazaar after after that after completing your degree it's very easy to get a job because you have you have acquired a bazaar during your your year of study and the challenge again is that i know i mean there is there isn't much challenge than that when you are underground the men suppress you like you don't belong there you're not strong enough to work there but academic challenges now they just need someone who is very focused and who likes math because it's a lot of calculations and one mistake can cost you almost everything then yeah i mean i'm enjoying my cause yes 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 it's very interesting and that the job opportunities guys like you can study mining engineering or mine surveying but immediately when you're done you are not only going to focus on being a mine surveyor you, you have you can be a drafter you can be an overseer you can be um my you can work under mining resource evaluation there are a lot of work available underground or on surface or you can be on the side and work with the civil engineers yes if you don't feel like being underground and you can also be a mind player all i can say is study hard and get a buzzer for your career so that you don't have to be experiencing them you don't have to be part of the unemployment percentage it's easy just put your mind on it and apply for bazaaris and pass obviously you cannot qualify for bazaaris if you're not passing then yeah i'm looking forward to see you guys in the mining industry women in mining hello everyone my name is wanele my surname is sishi i am a medical doctor and i'm currently doing my internship at Smafikeng Provincial Hospital in the Northwest. I studied at the University of the West Fastest Friend. I completed the Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery degree, commonly known as uh, Medicine. There are numerous opportunities in the medical field. Um, once you've completed your two years of internship and one year of community service, the sky's the limit. Um, one, you can go on to specialize in a field of your choice, uh, for example, pediatry, surgery, psychiatry, you name it. Some people go on to open their own private surgeries and become general practitioners. And there's also an op option of specializing in family medicine. You can also go into the laboratory setting as a chemical pathologist or into forensics as a forensic pathologist. There's also an opportunity to teach, either as a specialist or a clinical tutor. 
and you can also go on to become an advisor for insurance companies or law firms. These are just a few examples of the opportunities that exist in the medical field. Um, becoming a medical doctor and the journey thereof definitely hasn't been easy. I've had challenges that I've had to overcome. Notably, I'm from a rural area called Swaimane, um, in KwaZulu Natal. Our closest city is Pitama Respect. Being from a rural area uh, meant that I didn't have uh, access to facilities that learners from more developed areas had. Despite these challenges though, I managed to matriculate um, as one of the top three learners in the country in, from the South Sea schools. Uh, after that, I received a scholarship uh, um, uh, from the University of the West Virtual Strand um, called the Vice Chancellor's Equality Scholarship. It covered my tuition fees, my accommodation, and I also received an allowance. Um, moving from a rural area to a huge city like Johannesburg wasn't easy. I had to quickly adjust to the environment while keeping in mind where I was from, why I was there in the first place, and where I was going. This uh, made my first year of varsity difficult. But my most difficult year in varsity was definitely my fifth year. This is when I had to transition from studying theory to being to doing my practicals. Uh, I began to question and to doubt my ability to become a medical doctor. Uh, but with the reassurance and support of family and friends, I still managed to pass the year. And two years later, here I am, a qualified medical doctor. This just goes on to show that all things are possible when you believe in yourself and work hard. Thank you for listening. God bless. To the introduction of a vision board, we are going to look at what is a vision board? How do you develop your vision board? But also, more importantly, looking at how do you set goals aligned with your, with your vision board? So if we look at what a vision board is, it's literally a tool that you can use to visualize um, your dreams, your hopes, your goals for a particular period. You can do it for a year. You can do it for two years. You can do it for five years. And what you do is once you understand what you want to achieve within that particular period, you use a vision board with pictures, putting together a collage with either pictures or words that will help you to encapsulate the dreams and the goals and the visions that you have for a particular period of time. So if we look in this example, um, this is a 2018 vision board and it has such as eat better, improve the house, grow the business, etc. And remember, your vision board is very, very personal to what you want to achieve. If we look at how do we prepare a vision board, lots of people start off by just looking through magazine, taking pictures that resonate or can, that they connect with, cut it out and paste it in a collage. And there's nothing wrong with that. But the problem is when you do it that way, you literally put together things that you dream about, you put it on a board, and then promptly forget about it. What I normally tell the people that I'm coaching, that when you want to prepare your vision board, start with what do you want to achieve for that particular period, because then your vision board becomes more realistic. It doesn't become a dream that's not attainable, that you will never... Um, achieve, it becomes something that you really, really desperately want and you put it together in such a way that you know I am going to achieve it. So my point of view is that you start with what is it that you want to achieve for a particular year. So I normally design my vision boards with a one-year period. So people have a um, New Year's resolution, I start my year with preparing my vision board. Okay. 
okay and the way in which I do it I look at if you look at the wheel of life it identify each area of our lives that we would normally um, be juggling at the same time now I can set goals for all these areas in my life but the problem is if you have too many goals um, you kind of get lost in translation and you find out at the end of the year I had a goal for each of these areas in my life um, but I've only achieved one or two and the reason for that is that if you have too many goals you lose focus okay that's the one thing however the opposite is also true if we have too little goals you don't put any stretch for yourself so you don't put any um, how do I put it you don't put any effort into uh, into it because you know it's going to be easy to achieve so what I normally say is look at the year ahead what are the most important things that's going to happen in your life and set your goals according to that for instance two years ago I was still busy with my studies at UNISA and I wanted to graduate so my goal for 2018 was to complete my studies for that year okay um, last year one of my biggest goals was a spiritual goal um, I, I felt that I've, I'm not spending enough time um, spiritually and for me my goal for 2019 was putting God first um, so what we do is you look at these areas that represent your life and say which are the ones that I really want to address for this year then you take it so for instance you can say okay for me one of the things would be personal finances um, another area that I feel I really need to put some effort in is my health uh, romance you know I want to take my relationship to the next level or I want to start a new relationship I can also take an area such as personal growth so out of the wheel of life and all these areas that I can make a difference in my life I am going to choose um, five of them so I'm going to look at personal finances I'm going to look at health I'm going to look at romance I'm going to look at spiritual health I'm going to look at personal growth for instance now this is just how you start it right then your next thing that you do is then look at magazines find magazines pictures that resonate with you around um, that particular area so for instance if it's health um, for instance my goal now remember my vision is that I want to be more active for instance wait let me take you to the next so my vision for health is that I want to be more active in 2021 for instance right now what would being more active look like I could have things like I want to graduate what would graduate look like so we either use pictures or we just use words and this is stuff that we just cut out of magazines that says to me for 2021 my vision is to graduate for 2021 my vision is to buy my first car okay um, for 2021 I would like to travel to Bali um, I would like to find a man that really loves me okay those are the visions now remember having that picture on the board is just that a picture on the board when we have a vision the idea is that we want that vision to become a reality okay now how do we get our visions to become a reality we set goals goal setting is the most important part of your vision board because you can have the most beautiful vision for the most beautiful pictures and stories and your collage look amazing but if you don't set goals in order to achieve that vision then it's just a futile exercise okay so how do we set goals now remember we've set a vision if we look go back we've set a vision that we want to be more active right now if we look at setting goals for that vision our goal would be to complete at least two park runs per month 
right? Now that is a goal. If I do two park runs a month, I haven't done any up for this year. But in 2021, if I do two park runs a month, I will become more active, okay? So instead of just sitting on my behind um, in my room, in my house, every Saturday, two of those Saturdays, I'm going to complete a park run. But now you've set the goal, right? And the one thing that we need to know about goals, we said we need to set smart goals. So it must be specific. So yeah, it's specific. Two park runs I want to do every month. Um, it is measurable. At the end of the month, at the end of July, I can say, did I do two park runs? So I can, I can measure it, okay? It must be achievable. I cannot say I want to run five park runs in the month when there's only two happening, okay? Because then it's, it's, it's not achievable. Um, it's also not realistic, okay? Realistic means if there's seven, I can run seven. If there is two, I can't run seven. So that's what we talk about being realistic. And then T is around, it must be time bound. It must be linked to time. So yeah, I'm saying I'm gonna run two, I'm gonna do two park runs per month. So every end of the month, I can say, okay, in this month, did I do the two park rounds or not? If I haven't done it, I haven't achieved my goal, okay? So we then look at it in that way. But now there's certain actions that I need to complete to ensure that I can do the two park runs. So first of all, I must find the nearest park run venue. Now, if the nearest park run venue to me is um, in Pretoria, and I'm in Johannesburg, mm, that might become a little bit of a problem, unless I put the effort in. But what we must also realize is that if it is too much effort that we need to put in to achieve the goal, we're going to lose sight of that goal very quickly and we're going to get bored because in summer it's all good. I can take a taxi or I can get into a car and I can drive to Pretoria for that park run. But in winter, mm, not so much. So I've got to find the nearest park run venue so that I know is it going to be too much PT or not, okay? Then I need to find out, is there, do I need to sign up? How do I get information about the park run? What time do they start? And because I'm a bit of an extrovert and I hate doing things alone, I'm now going to find friends to do it with me, okay? Because I know that in order for me to stay true to that goal, I've got to make my environment as conducive to achieving that goal. Um, so, so what we do is I put together a goal that is directly linked to my um, activity. Okay. So just by way of checkout is first of all, before we start a vision board, we start with which area of our lives do we want to achieve certain goals. Okay. Then the next step is find pictures, words, etc., that link to what we want to achieve. And we use all of those pictures to make a collage. But we don't stop there. We then go into setting goals. And our goals is around what is my vision? What is the goal that I want to achieve? And then we put action plans in place how to reach that particular goal. I hope this will be of help. Thank you so much.